Have you ever wanted to grow the muscles in the space between your shoulder blades? If you have, this video is for you because you're gonna learn all about the rhomboids. So let's jump right into it. The rhomboids actually sit underneath of the trap. So we actually have to remove the traps to see both the rhomboid major, which is highlighted here, and the rhomboid minor, which is above it. For our intents and purposes, we can group these muscles together as just one kind of unit. Now, when we think about where they attach, obviously they attach to the outside of the shoulder blade and they have this orientation that sort of uh, looks like uh, they're going upward and inward toward the spine and they attach directly to the spine. And so because they attach directly to the inside border of the scapula, they're really gonna be primarily involved in two major things. Number one is, and this is their primary role, they're gonna be involved in moving the shoulder blade inward toward the spine. That's something probably many of you are familiar with known as scapular retraction. But another thing that people are, I think, are less familiar with in general is the fact that they not only do that, but they also create a motion called downward rotation. So downward rotation occurs when this entire shoulder blade thing here rotates in this fashion, right? So we can call this a kind of counterclockwise direction, which I'll show on my skeleton model in just a second. But those two things, those two functions, retraction, in other words, bringing the shoulder blade inward toward the spine, and then also downward rotation, right, which they create by basically pulling up on the scapula in this direction. Those are the two primary functions of the rhomboids. And so those are gonna be the two functions that we need to actually load and train in the gym to see results in this muscle group. Also, what I would say again, is that even though the traps, which are shown on the right here, are above or more outside to the rhomboids, uh, it doesn't mean that getting your rhomboids bigger and more jacked won't actually give you the appearance of greater size, right? Much in the same way that getting your inner calf makes your outer calf look bigger and getting your brachialis bigger makes your biceps look bigger, right? The same holds true here. Adding size to these rhomboids will add size to the entire mid back. So again, just to briefly show you what these motions actually looks like on a live demo here. Again, the rhomboids running in this direction, they're going to do these two things mainly. They are going to take the shoulder blade from a position where it is forward, and they're going to drive it backward and upward toward the spine like this. This is known again as scapular retraction, pulling the shoulder blades backward and slightly upward. So from this angle, what it would look like is, you know, maybe something, oops, Frank's arm is literally out of his socket here. Okay, it would look like moving the shoulder blade backward like so, right? So we would want some kind of resistance that is pulling the arm forward. So if our arm is kind of anywhere in this window and we're pulling our shoulder blade back, cool. That's a great rhomboid activity. Now the other rhomboid activity that we want to do again is something known as downward rotation. That's what we want, want to load. So downward rotation occurs when the shoulder blade is rotated upward like this. You'll see how it's tipped in this direction. This would be upward rotation. So downward rotation occurs when the rhomboids again are pulling in this direction here. They're capable of rotating this whole thing boom, like that. So whoop from that position, right? I know all of you love my, my sound effects here. Okay. So upward rotation, boom, downward rotation. So we need to do something that is actually involving downward rotation, kind of like a modified pull down, which we'll show in the gym now. All right, so in order to load that downward rotating motion, we need to have our arm in a position where it is first upwardly rotated. So a variation I love to do this is basically a pull over type of exercise with a little bit of a twist. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up a cable uh, on the top or close to the top of a cable column. From there, all you're gonna do is grab the cable and basically lean into it so that your arm is being pulled up and kind of behind your head, almost like it's being pulled behind your ear. So if your left arm is doing the work, your left arm is being pulled directly behind your left ear, kind of toward the opposite side of your body. And all you're gonna do is basically some kind of pullover, but more directly toward the side as opposed to forward, right? Because if we do a forward kind of pullover, that's gonna involve a lot of the chest and a lot of the lat muscles. And so to kind of remove that from the equation and to prioritize that downward rotation component, we can angle a cable backward and behind us. And you can do this, by the way, with a straighter positioned arm or a more bent positioned arm. You'll see me doing either one of those variations here. I personally like the bent arm variation just a little bit better. For me personally, it feels a little bit less clunky, but play around with it and see what you like. Now, something that you can do besides this kind of sideways pullover variation to turn the downward rotation is just any kind of normal pull down. But just keep in mind that with any kind of normal pull down, specifically a wide grip would be my 
my first choice for the rhomboids in particular, um, you have to keep in mind that so many other muscles are gonna be involved, right? So the lats are gonna be a really big, big mover in any kind of pull down. Whereas in this sideways pullover variation, the lats will have very little, if anything, to do with the motion, just based on how the forces are set up. So again, when you're setting up this motion, get your arm overhead, lean into the arm, make sure it's being stretched behind that working side ear, and then just make sure basically that the cable is really, really uh, heavy at the top, i.e. it's closer to 90 degrees from your arm at the top, and that you're pulling down sideways in a kind of comfortable direction. So that's the first category of exercise, the downward rotation component. And then the second, and again, this would be my primary choice for the rhomboids, is just to load some kind of retraction. So a super convenient way to do this is you can angle a bench, say around 30 or so degrees, lie down on that bench for a chest support, grab a pair of dumbbells and just start doing a scapular retraction, which is basically you just squeezing your shoulder blades together uh, off of that angle. Notice that my arms are not at an angle that is um, you know, perfectly horizontal the whole time. It's okay if it's a little bit lower or a little bit higher. You basically just wanna be in a position where your arms are roughly getting pulled forward somewhere and where the load is trying to rip your shoulder blades forward off of your body. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I'm not spending a ton of time in the squeezed position. I'm kind of staying a little bit more in that stretch portion of the range where my arms are really far forward and I'm just kind of greasing that groove more towards the front half of the motion. That is my personal preference. You can play around with how much range of motion you wanna use. The thing to keep in mind though, as it relates to the rhomboids, is that the rhomboids will be a little bit more active, more toward that stretch position, um, just specifically because the more that your arms get pulled forward, the more that they're gonna be a little bit more stretched, and the less that the middle traps are gonna be able to contribute in that portion of the range. So overall, just kind of grease the groove in the length and portion of the motion. You can also alternatively do this on like a C cable station, right? Or any cable that can pull you horizontally where you can be stable. So you can just put your feet up like I am here and uh, just do the same exact thing with those uh, uh, sort of scapular motions as the only ones that are occurring. The, the reason, by the way, that you're not making this into a row is because the rhomboids don't move the arms, right? The, the lats, the teres major, uh, and the rear delts are muscles that move the arms. So when we're doing this kind of retraction-based thing, we're really isolating for the rhomboids and the other retractors like the middle traps and the lower traps when we do this kind of variation, right? We're not focused on pulling with the arms. The only reason we move the arms in that other pullover variation is because that's the only way to load downward rotation, but we don't really need to do that in the context of scapular retraction. Now, there are many other environments in which you could do this. It doesn't have to be the two that I showed you, the CD cable station and the dumbbell chest support. It could also be on a machine or you know anything similar. Basically, again, you just need something that is yanking your arms off of your body forward. Ideally, you have a chest support like I showed with the first variation. Ideally, you can comfortably load that position without having to sort of worry too much about stabilizing through your spinal erectors as you might have to with the seated cable station variation. Um, but ultimately, as long as you're stable enough, as long as you're not flailing all over the place, and as long as your rhomboids are the rate limiter of these scapular retractions, then you are good to go. Now, some of you may be thinking, Ben, do I even need to isolate my rhomboids? Well, my answer is simply that if your goal is to grow your rhomboids, why wouldn't you just pick an exercise that is more specific to them? It's kind of silly not to. It's kind of like saying, yeah, I wanna grow my biceps, but uh, I'm gonna do hammer curls to grow my biceps. Even though it's less specific, uh, you know, my biceps are probably getting enough stimulus. Well, that may be true for some of you and it may not be true at all for others. So just decide who you are, decide what you want, and pick the exercises that are appropriate to your goals. I hope this video helps. If you're interested, I have an upcoming course called Bodybuilding Biomechanics. It's gonna contain a lot of content that's a lot like this, except more in depth and probably honestly better communicated. So if you're interested in that, check out the following video and then click the link in the description if you're interested in saving 70% on pre-order. Bodybuilding Biomechanics is a video course that shows you how to target any muscle with perfect 
precision. Here's how the course is structured. Each muscle group in the body has its own individual module. Within each module, you will learn how to fully stretch the target muscle, how to fully shorten the target muscle, how to load the target muscle in the gym, and then how to stabilize the rest of your body to isolate the target muscle. What's the best part about this course? Anyone interested in growing muscle can learn everything instantly. There's no prior knowledge required because there's no use of jargon or long, boring lectures to explain biomechanics. I'm just gonna show you the how with none of the boring why because I've personally done the years of studying and applying to lifting so that you don't have to. Now, if you're on the fence about enrolling in this video course, here's why you should take it. Muscle growth is ultimately an outcome based on the exercises that you do. If you don't know how to target a muscle, how could you expect it to grow? After watching any video in this course, you'll be able to know how to target any muscle instantaneously so you can know that 100% of your efforts are going to the right muscle. And as a consequence, you won't waste weeks, months, or even years doing exercises that don't produce the results you want. With bodybuilding biomechanics, you will finally have complete control over all of your lifting. No guesswork, no fluff, just straight to the point videos that allow you to apply this information to the gym immediately.